Hey y'all, my name's Cam. I've been living in this Lance 901 truck camper for the last year and a half, uh, running a jewelry business in the back and traveling around the country. Uh, one of the main reasons that I chose to get a truck camper is that uh, I'm able to remove my home from my vehicle. So we have the camper anchored down here in my friend's backyard and uh, I have the truck to go in and out of town. A whole lot of factors came in to play when it came to choosing whether it's going to be a van, a school bus, a camper, a RV, all types of options. Um, but one of the main reasons I chose this truck camper, as you can see, you can stand up in here. I'm 5'8", and I have a lot of, a lot of room over my head to stand, so it's nice and cozy in here. Um, as a jeweler, I spend a lot of time here at the bench. This is my workstation. This is where I spend almost all my time. So I have my Amscope microscope set up with my Graver Smith and my Graver Hone. Uh, these systems are used for engraving and stone setting. I sell online entirely at the moment, so that's the way I've been able to travel full time. Uh, living in here and not paying rent, I'm able to travel, make jewelry, and sell it online to continue supporting the, the journey. Uh, I started with hemp macrame, making things that were like five, ten dollars and slowly working my way up. Currently working entirely in sterling silver and, and transitioning into 14 and 18 karat gold jewelry. Being able to pull this camper up with my huge window here on the ocean or on the mountains and, and create using solar energy, it's uh, a blessing and it's uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, the experiences that I've had and continue to have. Whenever I'm doing any filing or sawing, it's all happening here on my bench pin. And this is my catch for any silver or, or silicon that falls when I'm, when I'm creating. Plastic pull-out containers that I had in an old dresser that I put in here that fit perfectly. Here I've got some of my wire set up in a uh, PVC pipe that I'd cut out. This is just really awesome for keeping everything contained and manageable. This is my soldering station. When I have it set up here, I'm able to use my handheld butane torch to work and fabricate. Um, I work entirely in sterling silver and gold right now. Uh, up top here, we have my flex shaft. And what, how this works is uh, it's basically just a rotary tool that works off a foot pedal. So I can choose the speed here. Um, and that's used for polishing, for stone setting. Um, I use this every single day food storage and jewelry equipment. Um, this is where I keep all my butane refills. Um, just have some clothes over here, some shirts and some, some shorts, nothing too special there. I put up this little curtain for my boy. This is, this is my dog Ryder and he's got, a, he's got his bed under here and that's where he spends all of his time. I put this curtain up so that he's protected from, from anything in the air. These uh, little strings that hold these bins in, all the bins are bolted into the wood. So this prevents all the drawers from opening. And everything else is either bolted down or it has a low center of gravity for the weight that it has. So these machines are very heavy and low to the ground, so those will be just fine. Driving nice and slow and taking turns so everything stays. Two speakers under here and two speakers in the back that are connected to my Bluetooth. Absolutely mandatory when working, got to have the tunes bumping at all times. Two just desk LED lamps above my bench that um, are, allow me to maneuver them however I need, wherever I'm, uh, either I'm fabricating or I need more light in my workstation when I'm sawing or filing. Um, it's versatile and allows me to do all different types of jewelry. This is a graver smith and this uh, works off compressed air. Here I've got all my different tools that go into the interchanging handpiece. And this also works off a, a foot pedal down here on my left. So this allows for variable speeds from slow and calm to really intense and uh, a lot of power. So whether I'm engraving through silver or you know I'm uh, trying to set some stones and steel, um, it, it allows for all types of work to be done. That's what is going on right here on this ring that I'm working on. Been hand engraving this for the last day now.
one of the biggest things that my family would portray to me is like the what ifs and what if this were to happen or that when, when you're out there. And it's totally understandable and, and necessary to take into account. Um, it's just not necessarily the realities of, of life, you know. Um, in a truck camper, I don't have the ability to just jump right in my cab and, and take off. I have to get out and go around. So, you know, I did take that into consideration when I got this, but, you know, I, I really do try my best to meet people halfway out there and um, to just be really in tune with your environment, you know, to never really park for the night somewhere that you don't feel safe when you get out to get in your vehicle to sleep, you know. Um, something I want to share is there, you know, there was one time in this year when I was in San Diego where around three in the morning I had a really mysterious knock on my back door course you know woke up I wasn't really like afraid or anything so I had to dead bolted and and just sat here and and uh, after about 10-15 minutes that person went away and went back to sleep and the next morning I left you know it's all how we handle every situation um, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time everything's gonna be good and smooth sailing as long as you know we're all staying in, in good places and being in tune with our feelings and where we're at Um, here I have just a bunch of storage for pots and pans and tubbleware. This is great and has a little button here that locks it in when I'm driving. Um, so up top we got three burners up here and this will, this will fold up so I can cook here and have it all have it all open and then set it down and have a whole another space um, for prepping food and and drying dishes and such. A lot of people don't know that uh, campers are not necessarily designed for long-term living so um, the humidity in the air can can break down um, or degrade the interior quicker if uh, you're not uh, dehumidifying in humid areas so I like to I run this pretty much 24 7 while I'm down here um, here I've got my sink and I actually have a, this cutting board removes to another sink as well um, and up here I've got, you know, just my monitor for my tanks, um, my water pump, my water heater, got a hood light and a fan. Uh, I've got a microwave that actually I almost never use. It, it works when I'm plugged in, um, but it, it pulls too much energy for just solar. Every, I can literally like cook and make jewelry all in the same spot. <laughs> freecampsites.net and in Campendium, just great websites to find uh, this database of, of free places. Um, on BLM and National Forest, you can stay for 14 days without moving your camper and then you just gotta move like 20 yards. If you cut down your expenses, the money that you do have is gonna go way further. So instead of paying $1,000 a month in rent to somebody, I'm, I'm saving that and investing it into my art. This is some storage that for my um, plates and dishes that opens into the bedroom as well. And there's a flat screen TV up here. Uh, the TV can slide out into the living room or slide out into the bedroom, which is really, really great. In my camper, I've got uh, about a 40 gallon fresh water tank. So I almost never fill it past three fourths just because it adds so much weight to your camper. You're looking at about eight and a half pounds per gallon of water. So if you add that all up, you're going to decrease your gas mileage and also a lot of, lot of factors, you know, it's just going to be heavier and not as easy to drive. So I keep my fresh water at about half and always make sure to be dumping my gray water as well. Um, so everything in here runs off propane. Um, I've got two five gallon propanes out uh, on the exterior of the camper that run my that run my burners, it runs my refrigerator, and it also runs my heater for when I'm in cold areas. You can just see straight outside the camper right now, but that is uh, the, the inside of my truck bed. So you can actually store more stuff in between your truck bed and the camper through there. The wardrobe, um, got just some clothes in here. And then right above me, I've got my air conditioning unit, currently connected the shore power to my friend's house. And it's amazing. It uh, keeps the camper way cooler than it needs to um, when it is hot out. So I'm very thankful for that. 
I actually, when I first started making jewelry, the way that I would go and market myself and travel around was hitting a lot of festivals. So here I've got all my festival wristbands of the festivals that I've been to. It's been a little over 20 something on there. And uh, as we transition into the bedroom here, I've got a little drape that's really nice because this can, you know, close off. And this was originally a couch with a bed here, so it's nice you could have a little separate living area if you'd like. A big skylight up here, and it's also an escape hatch. So um, it's nice to have an, another option for if, you know, you, you have to get out through the top or if, uh, you know, I've, I go up there a lot to watch sunsets and everything. So you can just open this up and hop right out. This is something that's been brewing for a while. I've been working on some some fire cider for the winter time. So this has got a lot of turmeric and garlic and onions and lemons that are all brewing and uh, apple cider vinegar to keep the immune system high when traveling. And this is my journal that I've been writing in every, I try to write in every single day that I've been traveling. So spot, you got every day for the last year and a half in here. Um, and it's just really great to reflect on and look back at. A um, lot of lessons and amazing stories written in here. Kind of just the area to relax and decompress. It's a really comfy bed, which is always great when traveling, just to feel at home on the road. One of my main intentions when I hit the road is to just allow things to unfold as they happen every day, you know. You're, you're constantly meeting new people and especially with climbing, when I found climbing um, a couple months into my travel, it allowed me to go to these beautiful, beautiful areas all over the country and in correlation with that, uh, get in contact with a lot of the climbing community which has been nothing but supportive and awesome people. Here's my hangboard. So this is for strengthening fingers, doing pull-ups, doing core workouts, all types of different stuff. I could hang on it with just, just enough height where my knees are above the ground still. So that's been nice. <laughs> Here I have a full-size mirror on the outside door of my bathroom. For me, I decided the storage would be more beneficial because um, there's the option to use toilets everywhere and if you're using a bathroom on a camper, you have to deal with all the gross black water and dumping it and using all the chemicals and everything like that. And uh, the shower as well. It'd be nice to have a shower every once in a while in here, but you gotta heat up the heat up the water and you have to use lots of water and dump it and refill it and all that. So it's just it's just too much to think about. So I just use showers on the road elsewhere and I use uh, toilets elsewhere and um, the storage has been more than useful. I don't know what I'd do with all this climbing stuff and, and extra gear if I didn't have the space. I've got a pretty large fridge with a freezer. Um, right now I'm plugged in to the house, so this runs off alternating current, direct current, and gas. So while I'm traveling, it's running entirely off propane, and the propane is extremely efficient. I, I can never stress this enough to people that are, um, you know, getting into van life and everything, because, again, I have two five-gallon propane tanks, and if I'm running just my fridge and just cooking, those two five-gallon propane tanks will last over two months of running my fridge and my burners, which is extremely efficient because that's, you're looking at like around $20 to fill that up. Here, I've got a really nice storage rack for all my food. This pulls out, really efficient use of space. Um, this is for my solar, this is the solar controller, and this is the solar charger down here. So up top, uh, I've got two 170 watt solar panels. Um, this is my 1500 watt inverter that's connected to my two 6 volt golf cart batteries that are connected to the solar power. I try to not drink any of the fresh water from my tanks because um, it just sits and I like having nice filtered clean water so I always make sure I get this filled up at a station. Max air vent. Um, a lot of van life people know all about this. It's very important to have circulation inside your space especially if you're making jewelry or something inside, you need to make sure it's all flowing through. Um, you know, keeps the air nice and crisp in here and the sink circulates air like crazy. So it can actually keep your camper under 75 degrees, even in super hot conditions. So I can run it open while it's raining and it'll stay dry in here, which is really great.
obviously I got my screen door and a hard door as well with a deadbolt on it. So some things that people worry about is safety on the road and I, I'm, I feel very safe in here having the deadbolted door and um, the camper sits pretty high so the windows are pretty high up and yeah, it's been a year and a half with no problems. It's been nice and safe here. So here we are in the back. I just have this step that goes up and down that I can put up and, uh, and down really easily when I'm moving. Um, and these are the electric jacks that can uh, lower my camper or put it up when I'm taking it on and off. Uh, I installed a backup camera back here that's been absolutely essential. Um, I probably would have backed into like a thousand things already if I didn't have it because with the truck camper you can't really see out the back. Um, so the, the backup camera has been essential. So this has been really nice, you know, for coming outside and and getting out of the sun or getting out of the rain. My battery system here, and I upgraded from one deep cycle battery to two six volt golf cart batteries linked in a parallel to create one large 12 volt. Um, just put in a little ventilation system so that they could breathe. Here I've got my two propane tanks, nice big ones. Uh, again, these have been great and pretty easy to take in and out my large awning so this has like a little uh, like a stick that I put up here and turn it and the whole thing comes out this is my connection to um, shore power so I'm plugged in right now this is the exhaust for my heater an outdoor shower right here this pulls out and you can stick it up here and use this Twenty five hundred Duramax diesel uh, Silverado. Um, a whole lot of things go into play when it comes to finding the right truck for a truck camper. Still having a back seat without having the four door length, and I also want to have a long bed. So this is an eight bed truck instead of a six foot. So these are some steel brackets that are connected onto the back of the truck that connect to the camper. On here I have the heavy duty leaf springs that are standard with the truck, but I installed a timber and suspension upgrade, which are these two massive springs between the frame and the axle of my truck, which adds an additional maximum 6,000 pounds of additional payload um, to your vehicle. Uh, it's been a year and a half and it's been a breeze. She's handles great. I also put in a rear sway bar just for extra added safety for high winds and highway driving. Uh, I got four wheel drive. I haven't used it much, but the three times I have used it have, have gotten me out of situations where I would have been stranded out in the desert. I do have a towing option with this truck that what came, st uh, came standard and what that does is it allows for an exhaust brake while going down um, steep inclines. And again, that's been a total game changer and very necessary with truck campers because with all the weight coming down, you do not want to be relying on your brakes only to be getting you down steep inclines. So that gives a lot of peace of mind and added safety with a truck camper setup. So I try to try to make the best stuff that I can and to share it with the world. So if you like what you see, please go give my website a check at chakraroots.com or on Instagram at chakra underscore roots. Um, thank you so much for coming along and checking it all out. And I hope this video inspires you.